Good day, brothers and sisters, and uh, welcome to the viewing number 14 in our series, uh, Our Higher Calling. It is a series that has been running for some long time, and uh, we are almost coming to the end of it today. At this time that I'm looking at uh, number 14 in the series, and uh, it's uh, about uh, leadership. Uh, this is something that uh, uh, we should think about when uh, we are doing the end time job in our higher calling, the end time godly leaders that the Lord is um, uh, uh, wants to raise so that uh, uh, we may be able to finish up uh, the work and uh, in uh, uh, the end time god leaders in in this um, presentation uh, the end time godly leaders uh, are, are like us to focus on nehemiah uh, leadership principles which are calculated for this time that uh, we are living in seeing that uh, Nehemiah was a builder of the bridge and uh, the Lord is seeking up a people who will be uh, bridge builders, who will stand in the gap to be able to finish the work. And so I, I like to look at the principles that the Lord is looking um, uh, in the lives or the Lord is seeking to establish in the life of his children, as even we are in the end time and um, uh, have been called, we have this higher calling of bridging uh, uh, the gap that has been made in the law of God. When you read Isaiah chapter 58, we are told that, um, and they... And they shall, and they that shall be of thee shall build all the, shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the bridge, the restorer of the paths to dwell in. And so, when we look at our Bibles, uh, we find that. Um, there is a bridge that has been made in the law of God and we have received a higher calling so that we may be repairers of this bridge, bridge that um, has been made in the law of God. And so I want us to look at the principles for restoring the walls of Zion using Nehemiah principles. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment, as even we study thy word, thy spirit may take control, and Lord, we may be educated in the things you want to educate us, and we may move closer to thee, that um, we may be able to finish the work. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. In Jesus' name we plead. Amen. And so, God is looking for a people whom he can use to be able to finish up the work, to finish up the work of uh, this uh, time, the work of uh, this time. And uh, uh, I, I want you to look at the book of uh, Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23. The Bible says, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed uh, my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the eve of your doings, saith the Lord. And I'll gather the remnant of the flock out of all the countries whither I have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. 
Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I'll raise up, I raise unto David a righteous branch, and king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In, the, in his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is the name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days come with the Lord that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth which shall brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord liveth which brought up and which led the seed of house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries whither I had driven them, and they shall dwell in the, your own lands. And so God is talking about uh, raising up pastors, raising up leaders who will take care of the flock. And not only take care of the flock, but um, be the restorers of the bridge or build up the, the walls of Zion that um, has um, has been uh, 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 destroyed. So, uh, we, we are looking, uh, look at um, the book of um, Jeremiah chapter 3 once again. We are looking at godly leaders, end time God leaders, and we are going to look at Nehemiah leadership principles that are calculated to help us understand our higher calling at this time when the law of God has been breached and he's looking for leaders, for watchmen in Israel to restore the foundation that be old. The book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 3. Let us look at Jeremiah chapter 3. What does the word of God say? Listen. Uh, the book of Jeremiah chapter 3 and uh, it is uh, it is a uh, verse um, verses uh, we start at um, let us start as early as uh, verse 12 in this reading verse 12 it says go and this is a call to israel to repent go and proclaim this word toward the north and say return thou backsliding israel said the lord and i'll not cause mine anger to fall upon you for i am merciful said the lord and i'll not keep anger forever only acknowledge thine iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the lord thy god and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree and ye have not obeyed my voice said the lord turn o backsliding children said the lord for i am married unto you i will take you one of a city and two of a family and i'll bring you to zion and i'll give you pastors according to mine heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding and it shall come to pass when you be multiplied and increased in the land. In those days, said the Lord, they shall say no more the ark of covenant of the Lord. Neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done no more. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it to the name of the Lord to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil. For, so in verse 15... The Lord is saying that um, he will give Israel pastors, uh, uh, he will give Israel pastors according to his own heart. These are the leaders that we are talking about, that um, our higher calling, the Lord is saying that he wants to give Israel pastors uh, uh he wants to give pastors to Israel according to his own heart. And so, these pastors, there is a call to repent, a call to sanctify our lives so that we may be used as the leaders, as the restorers of the bridge 
in the law of God that has been given unto us. And so there is a broken covenant and God is seeking a people whom he can use to restore Israel. And uh, why should God look for pastors who are according to his own heart? In Jeremiah 10 verse 21 he says, For the pastors are become brutish and have not sought the Lord. Therefore they shall not prosper and all their flocks shall be scattered. The reason why God is looking for pastors and for godly leaders is because the current pastors, the current leaders are brutish, Jeremiah 10, 21, and have not sought the Lord. So how will we be amongst those numbered to be restorers of the bridge if only we seek after the Lord? Then the Lord will endure uh, us with his own spirit. And we shall be able to be used to uh, finish uh, the work. We shall be able uh, to use to be used to finish the work. He also says in uh, Jeremiah chapter 12, verses 10, Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion under foot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it desolate, and being desolate, it mourneth unto me. The whole land is made desolate, because no man laid it in heart. And so, uh, those who have been appointed to do the work have not done it, but have loaded over the heritage. And so, the Lord wants to install in new pastors those who will seek him, with all their heart. Only those who will seek him with all their heart are the ones that are going to be used. In Jeremiah chapter 23, let us look at Jeremiah chapter 23. We are looking at uh, the end time God leaders that the Lord is seeking to establish. We must sanctify our hearts. We must go before the Lord in confession and repentance and then the Lord will be able to use us. He, he, he says, this is what the Lord says, brothers and sisters, Jeremiah 23, Woe uh, be unto the pastor that, des that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, said the Lord. Therefore thus said the Lord God of Israel uh, against the pastor that feed my people. You have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I'll visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith the Lord. I'll gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries whither I have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I'll raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. And so the Lord wants to restore Jerusalem. The Lord wants to restore the gospel order. The Lord wants the shepherds that will not be hirelings, but the shepherds that shall feed the flock. And for you, to be equipped for such a work, there must be a repentance. The Lord says, Mine heart, chapter 23, verse 9 of Jeremiah, Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine hath overcome because of the Lord and because of the words of holiness. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of swearing the land mourneth, the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up and their cause is evil and their force is not right. For both the prophet and priest are profane. Here in my house have I found the wickedness, saith the Lord. And so he says he will seek to restore Jerusalem with only those uh, who are repentant in their heart. He continues to say in Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 30, That therefore, behold, I am against the prophet, said the Lord, that steal my 
words everyone from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophet, said the Lord, that use their tongues and say, he said, Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams. And so you find that these pastors and these prophets have been uh, actually prophesying a falsehood. And that is why God wants to give the pastors and prophets and the leaders in end time who will not only sanctify their hearts to be used, but they will declare the whole counsel of the Lord without deceiving for any gain. Because look at um, what it says in Jeremiah 5, 31. 30 and 31. Jeremiah 5, 30 and 31. A wonderful and a horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means, and my people love to have it so, and what will you do in the end thereof? So these are prophesying falsely, and they are prophesying for their own means. Look at uh, the book of First Samuel also. The book of First Samuel. I hope you have your Bibles wherever you are. I hope you have everything you need for this study. End time godly leaders. The book of First Samuel. Samuel. Let us look at the book of 1 Samuel, what it, it says. Chapter uh, 2, talking about Eli and his children professing, profaning the sacrifices of the Lord. The Lord tells Eli this. Verses 31st, Wherefore the Lord of God of Israel said, I said indeed that mine, my house and the house of my father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, Be it far from me, for them that honor me I'll honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Verses uh, 35, he says, uh, Verses 34, And this shall be a sign unto thee, 1 Samuel 2, 34, And this shall be a sign unto thee that shall come upon thy two sons on Hophni and Phinehas. In one day they shall die, both of them. 35, And I'll raise me up faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in mine heart and in my mind, and I'll build him a sure house, and he shall walk before mine anointed forever. That is Samuel. But the other priests, those who rule for again and prophes prophesy falsely, verse 36, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left in thine house shall come and crouch to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread and shall say, put me, I pray thee, into one of the priest offices that I may eat a piece of bread. And so they shall come for, the, the, the people already are ruling for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread. And the Lord says that he shall raise in the end time a faithful people to do and finish his work. And so as we are looking at um, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the the end time God leaders, let us look at Nehemiah leadership principles and be warned and be prepared in heart to be used by God. Let us look at what God is looking at as he chooses his servant in the end time. And the Lord has not left us without a clear light of what he needs from those who shall guide his children in the end time. First of all, let us have a general background. The date of writing is after 420 B.C., uh, that is Nehemiah chapter 12, verses 26 and 47. Uh, Ezra 7, 8 arrived in Jerusalem. Se um, uh, the seventh year of Artaxerxes uh, began rule in 465 BC. And then you remember the prophecy of Daniel chapter 8, verses 14, and to 2,300 days, and then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. And then that prophecy, we are told in Daniel chapter 9 that uh, 490 years or 70 weeks are cut off of that period. And we know that that period started in 457 BC. And so in 457 BC, the children of Israel had to go and start building the 
uh, walls of Jerusalem or they had to go because of the decree to go and start building Jerusalem. And uh, some of the things that were to be done under the building or the rebuilding of Jerusalem, let us go to the book of Daniel chapter 9 and see some of the things Nehemiah, Ezra and those who are there were supposed to do at such a time. Now, I want us to be clear why we are learning our higher calling and end time godly leaders. During the restoration, the first restoration of the temple after 70 weeks of 490 years, uh, it was to usher in the Messiah for the first coming. It was to usher in Jesus Christ for the first coming to die for our sins. The restoration of the temple the second time will be to usher in actually the second coming of Jesus Christ. And so as the God leaders were sought at that time, God is seeking a God leaders at this time for the temple to be restored and then the Christ whom you want shall come. What are the things that they had to do? The book of Daniel chapter 9, it says, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. So the leaders at that time, the people has had to meet this six pointer to be able to restore the walls of Jerusalem. And the end time leaders also have to meet the six pointer. That is to finish transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring everlasting righteousness, to fill up, to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. And the only way we can anoint the most holy. Uh, who is Jesus Christ, is to finish transgression, to accept him as the Lord, our righteousness. Because he says that uh, when these pastors shall be put upon the people, then in Israel they shall be uh, 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 called the Lord, our righteousness. So God is seeking a people who can bridge, uh, bridge the gap that has been made in his laws, and it is you and me he is seeking after. And Going back to the book of Ezra, look at the book of Ezra a little bit. Look at this book of Ezra. I'll take you to the book of Ezra. And uh, the book of Ezra, look at chapter 7, verses 10. What is the Lord looking at the what is actually the Lord looking at in appointing his end time leaders? Ezra chapter 7 verse 10 says, For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgment. So the Lord is seeking for a people who will teach his children the statutes and judgment for such a time as this to prepare them for the end time Work and in Ezra chapter eight, verses uh, uh, verses fifteen. Here is the saddest thing: the assembly at Ahava and the solicitation of the Levites. When uh, Ezra was looking for a people to do such a work, people who could humble themselves and uh, they they knit their heart with the heart of God and do the work. When he assembled the people at Ahava and so solicited for Levites, it is a sad thing that is recorded in Ezra chapter 8 verse 15. And I gathered them together to the river and ra that runneth to Ahava, and there abode we in tents three days. And I viewed the people and the priest and found there none of the sons of Levi, brothers and sisters. This is something which is so sad that the priest, the sons of Levi could be sought and they could not be found. Because we find that um, uh, they had, uh, uh, the, uh, Nehemiah talks about what is the problem. But before even we go to Nehemiah, what had happened to the tribe of Levi? 
uh, the book of Ezra chapter 10 verses 3. Now therefore let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives and such are born of them according to the counsel of the Lord and those that tremble at the commandment of God and let it be done according to the law. These people had taken in strange wives. Now you have to understand that they had taken in strange wives. Which means that the pastors and the elders of this time, they had they, they, they are in fornication with other fallen churches. That is why the Lord can't use them. And so when the Levites are sought after, they are not found because the pastors, the elders, the laymen, the clergy are in fornication with the other churches which are fallen. And yet the Lord says in the Revelation chapter 14 that uh, uh, the 144 are virgins. They are not defiled by other churches. And so the Lord is seeking up a people who are not defiled like Ezra. The Lord is seeking up a people. The tribe of Levi had fornicated and had taken in strange wives. They had taken in the strange wife. And so the Lord could not use them to finish the work. The, the work. And uh, uh, look at what they had done. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 13, verses 23, uh, downwards. In those days, I also I saw, also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod and of Ammon and of Moab, and their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jewish language. The, the, these children could not speak in Seventh-day Adventist language. There was a barrier. Some spoke the children of uh, the, the language of the Sunday keepers. Some spoke the language of Muslims. Some spoke whichever language they could speak. They had uh, contaminated themselves with um, strange wives. Like right now, we have contaminated ourselves with fallen churches and teaching evangelical gospels. They could not speak the Jewish language. They could not speak the three angels' messages. They were mixing in things, this and that. Verse 25, And I contended with them, and cast them, and smote certain of them, and plucked off their air, and made them swear by God, saying, Ye shall not give your daughters unto their son, nor take their daughters unto your sons or yourself. Did not Solomon king of Israel sin by these things? Yet among many nations were there no king like him, who was beloved of his God, and God made him king over all Israel. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil to transgress against our God in marrying strange wives? And one of the sons of Joada, the son of Eliashib, the high priest, was son in Lord Sanballat, the Hononite. Therefore I chased him from the throne. And the Lord shall have such a leader who shall stand for truth and chase these people who are actually mixing up and, uh, uh, and have a leaders who are purified. For um, for the end time. In fact, this is uh, what we read in last day events, page um, one seventy nine, paragraph two. Look at um, what we read in uh, Great Controversy uh, in last day events, page uh, one seventy nine point two. The great issue so near at hand, enforcement of Sunday laws, will weed out those whom God has not appointed, and He will have a pure, true, sanctified ministry prepared for the latter rain, found in 3 SM 385 2. So the Lord is seeking God leaders that can be able to finish the work, those who will sanctify their life and be used uh, for the glory of his name. Those who will sanctify their lives and be used for the glory of his name. So we are talking about end-time builders of the bridge. What is the theme uh, of such a time as this? It is the rebuilding of the walls, major sub-themes, God's covenant, purity of worship, faithfulness in adversity, major teaching point of this study, characteristics of good leadership and end-time uh, leaders. And so uh, we find that in Ezra chapter 1 verse 6, we find restoration under the Rubabel. And uh, there we had prophets Haggai and Zechariah. That is the first return of the Jewish. In Esther 2.50 years, there is a gap. And Ezra 7-10, Reformation under Ezra, 457 BC. 
the second return and re reconstruction under the Himaya, that is 444 to 425 BC, the, the walls are prepared and the prophet Malachi was there. We, we shall see that the Lord is doing something. Back in 1888, he brought about Wagona and Jonas and uh, the, the movement of that time. And then he, uh, he in, uh, uh, in, in early uh, 1950s, he brought in uh, the builders also of the bridge. And right now, he is building. And why am I referring to his building? This is the third return. This is the third return because we find that the prophet Malachi is mentioned there. And in Malachi chapter 4, we find that there is an Elijah. And so we are living at the time of Malachi chapter 4, where Elijah has to return and build the walls of Jerusalem. And that Elijah is me and you. We are told the success attending Nehemiah's effort shows what prayer what prayer, faith, and wise, energetic action will accomplish. Nehemiah was not a priest. He was not a prophet. He made no pre pretension to high title. He was a reformer raised up for an important time. It was his aim to set his people right with God. Inspired with a great purpose, he bent every energy of his being to his, uh, its accomplishment. High and bending integrity marked his efforts. As he came into conduct with evil and opposition to uh, right, he took so determined a stand that the people were roused to labor with fresh zeal and courage. They could not but recognize his loyalty, his patriotism, and his deep love for God. And seeing this, they were willing to follow where he led. And so, even in the end time, the Lord is seeking a people who will be anxious by his Holy Spirit and not trained into by literal institution. People, laymen, who can induce people to uh, to the truth. And uh, the message of the end time, actually, it's not, uh, uh, it's not meant for the clergy. It's not meant for the people. Uh, the, the message that we are having this time, uh, it's not committed to the leadership. It is committed to humble uh instruments who can be uh, used by God, who can accept to be used by God. This is what we find, that Jesus sent his people a message of warning to prepare them for his coming. To the prophet John was made known the closing work in the great plan of man's redemption. He beheld an angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue, and people saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. Revelation 14, 6-7. The angel represented in prophecy as delivering the message symbolizes a class of faithful men who are obedient to the prompting of God's spirit and the teaching of his word proclaim the warning to the inhabitants of the earth. The message was not to be committed to the religious leaders of the people. They had failed to preserve their connection with God and had refused the light from heaven. Therefore, they were not of the numbers described by the Apostle Paul. But ye are brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all the children of light and the children of the way, the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. So, the message for this time... It is a message. It is a message to laymen and the people. Yes, some pastors and elders will be involved, but few will be involved in this. And um, uh, uh, the, the name Nehemiah meant comfort of Jehovah, and he served as a cupbearer of Persian king Artaxerxes during his 41-year reign. He gave up the luxury of the ease of the palace to help his people. In Israel, he gave up his luxury. And the Lord says that uh, even at this moment, there shall be a people who shall live their own uh, uh, luxury. There shall be a people who shall live their own luxury and um, be used to finish the work as the people 
of Nehemiah. He, he led uh, the third group of people to Jerusalem in 444 BC, 13 years after the second group. And this Nehemiah supervised the construction of the wall to protect the city of Jerusalem, and he was governor of Judah. And uh, so God is only needing a people who are concentrated, consecrated unto him so that they may be, uh, uh, they may be uh, used for his work. And uh, uh, the, the, the thing that we should be asking ourselves is, will God really use us? Will God really use us? Will we have the principles of Nehemiah in this Reformation time? And so, just going through some things. Let us go through something. Principles of godly leadership in Nehemiah. He was a good leader. He pays attention to details. That is Nehemiah chapter 1 verses 1 to 2. He has a heart for his people. The burden of the work is the souls. In John chapter 10 verses 16, in the book of John chapter 10 verses 16, this is what we read. That... Um, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. So our interest should be the interest of bringing the hearts to repentance, not having followers and disciples after ourselves, but making disciples unto Christ. In Matthew chapter 28, verses 19, uh, he says that go ye into the world and make disciples, disciples unto Christ and not unto ourselves. So a good leader will have the interest of the souls to Christ, has a heart for his country. We should have heart after our own countrymen, whether they be atheists, whether they be heathens or pagans. It should be our work. To work for our countrymen before we can think like a Kenyan before I think in going to Zambia in going to South Africa in going to Zambia and even ultimately to USA where people are sleeping somehow and other lands Australia I have to think about my own country he says that and power shall be given unto you Acts chapter 1 verse 8 and you shall start at Jerusalem we have to start at our own country before we think of helping other people who are in other countries, and I'm not saying that we are not to help other people in other countries, we have to do everything to make sure that the messages are going in the four corners of the world. But is the interest of your country at your heart? Are you doing something in your country that can show that actually you can be a godly leader? Has the heart for his God. The, the people who see the Lord or the law of God being maligned, actually they feel pain at how much how Christ has to suffer once again for the sins of the world. And so they have the heart for their God. Is a person devoted to prayer that we'll find in Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 4 to 11. They are dedicated to prayer, they are devoted to prayer. So the psalmist says, talks about prayer, um, and the book of Revelation talks about prayer. If there is anything that can make the work successful, is a people on their knees. Not a people who have a lip service, they talk too much. The people who will want to do things by their muscles and not prayer, they would like to drive home or to hammer home their points, but they are not devoted and sanctified unto prayer so that the Lord may break the barriers. They, it, the, it, the Lord himself, using his spirit, may break the hearts of the people and prepare them to receive the message in gladness. Anyone who doesn't pray for the souls to be made a soil which is good to receive the seed does a very difficult work because you only have a dry sermon which cannot convict or convert people. 
the people God is looking for have a great respect for the Lord. They will go to another level to, 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 to fight for the integrity or the respect of the Lord, whether it be outside in the sanctuary or whether it will be inside the sanctuary. So, a God leader has a vital relationship with God, has a servant's heart, takes personal, personal responsibility, has a heart of repentance, obeys God's commands. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 7 uh, knows God's word, applies God's word. It is not just enough that we know the word of God. It is enough, first of all, if we apply it to ourselves, then be able to to promulgate it to others to apply their hearts. Because we are told that um, you who sees a speck in the eye of your neighbor, first of all, remove the log in your eye so that you may be able to see well. So it is not just important that we know the word of God. It is important that we apply the word of God to ourselves and after we have seen the difference that it brings in our lives, even the fruit of the Holy Spirit, then we can be able to turn the hearts of even those who are so hardened in sin. A God leader is a redeemed leader, believes in God's great power, knows where to go when he she needs help. Oh Lord, I beseech thee. There are many who depend on human power in doing what they do. Such a dependence on self will never yield fruits meet for repentance. You will only see yourself, and even it brings about pride and selfishness, thinking that because you have been at forefront and something has happened, then you are something in the society. But you are nothing because without God, the book of John chapter 15, ye can do nothing. Every success of the work geared towards the salvation of men is the work of God and not the work of man. It is the interceding spirit of Jesus Christ that can be able to bring a change in a man. So godly leaders know where to go when he or she needs help. And they will not beat about their chest that I have accomplished this or that. Desires to fear God's name. And Nehemiah willingly sacrificed a king's lifestyle to serve God, family, and country. God is looking for such a people who can be able to sacrifice missionaries who shall be able to leave their comfort for the work of the Lord. Disciples who shall be able to leave their comfort, family, and be able uh, to live for, for the Lord and uh, uh, do his work. And so Nehemiah qualified in uh, uh, in these things that um, we are talking about. The things that um, we are talking about. Godly end time, godly leaders. And uh, these are very helpful principles uh, when um, uh, we come to when we come to being uh, putting ourselves in a, a place that um, uh, God can, uh, can 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 use us. God can use us. And uh, I wanted to look at something. Just give me a minute. 
God is looking for those people who will actually put everything to work for him to work for him i'm looking for something in signs of the time signs of the time yes um signs of the time i'll give you a page in a moment if i find it not signs of the time and so as a uh, as we near the end time, this is uh, what the Lord is looking for. Let me just get it from here. As we near the end time, this is what the Lord is looking for. Uh, there is uh, Acts of Apostles. First one is Acts of Apostles. Let us look at Acts of Apostles uh, 370, paragraph 1. Acts of Apostles 370. Paragraph 1, talking about God is calling a people who will sacrifice. People who will sacrifice for the work of I'll put it here we are talking about Nehemiah willingly sacrifice a king's lifestyle to serve God family and can we look at uh, what kind of leaders God is looking at God is calling for men who are willing to leave their farms, their businesses, if need be, their families to become missionaries for him. Missionaries for, for, for him. Uh, it continues that um, if need be their families to become missionaries for him, and the call will be answered. In the past, there have been men who stirred by the love of christ and the needs of the lost have left the comforts of home and the society of friends even that of wife and children to go into foreign lands among idolaters and savages to proclaim the message of mercy many in this in the attempt have lost their lives but others have been raised up to carry on the work thus step by step the cause of christ has progressed and the seed sown in sorrow has yielded a bountiful harvest the knowledge of God has been widely extended and the banner of the cross planted in heathen land. This is what the Lord is looking for in such a time as this. A people who will sacrifice their comfort for a for, for proclaiming the word of God, for proclaiming the word of God. And uh, also in uh, also in HDL, but before I read the 
what is in HDL, I'll um, just read. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll read for you what is in uh, ST, June 30, 1881. Um, yes, here it is in ST June thirty, eighteen eighty one, paragraph three. I hope you can see it on screen. We are talking about end time, end time uh, leaders. So it says that um, all who will be soldiers of the cross of Christ must guard on the armor and prepare for conflict. They should not be intimidated by threats or terrified by dangers. They must be Cautious in peril, yet firm and brave in facing the foe and doing battle for God. The consecration of Christ's follower must be complete. Father, mother, wife, children, houses, lands, everything must be held secondary to the work and cause of God. He must be willing to bear patiently, cheerfully, joyfully, whatever in God's providence he may be called to suffer. His final reward will be, will be to share with Christ the throne of immortal glory. We find that uh, Nehemiah, Nehemiah uh, willingly sacrificed a king's lifestyle to serve God, family, and country. And that is the kind of leaders God is looking at such a time uh, as, as this. And uh, this is interesting. I want you to help in uh, uh, daily living, um, page um, 49, paragraph 1. 49, paragraph 1. This is what we find. There is a picture representing a bullock at standing between a plow and an altar with the inscription, ready for either, ready to toil in the furrow or be offered on the altar of sacrifice. This is the position of the true child of God, willing to go where duty calls, to deny self, to sacrifice for the Redeemer's Cause. These are kind of the leaders that the Lord is looking for, and we are looking at the end time God leader, and we are looking at Nehemiah principles. A God leader uses any God given position for uh, uh, Nehemiah was the cupbearer of the king to further the kingdom and the plan of God. Whichever position you find yourself in, knows uh, he is God's man or woman for the moment as Nehemiah. Uh, 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 new and then is consistent and persistent in prayer. Uh, do their job with excellence. Cabera not to be sad in the king's presence. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 1. Respect authority. Know how to make an appeal. Nehemiah does not mention Jerusalem by name because of the decree against it in Ezra 4.21 but brings in the idea of respect for the dead. That is uh, Jerusalem. And so we must be a prayerful people. We must be a people who are consecrated to the Lord to be able to be like Nehemiah because such a work shall not be accomplished by a people who are not praying. Uh, and uh, when we pray, uh, every obstacle is removed. Every obstacle is removed. And uh, uh, the goals are achievable. The enemies are subdued, and the glory goes to the go to the Lord. And uh, uh, we we have to come out of the mindset that um, we have to do something grievous to be accepted. No, we have to be a people who understands that the Lord is willing to pour out His Spirit upon us and to make us His vessels to be used at uh, such a time as this. Uh, end, end time, godly leaders are not uh, 
self-centered people. No, they are a people who are ready to unite and finish the work. The, the self-centered people are people who would want only praise to go to them, but um, are people who are, are concerned with the Lord. They will not care whom the praise goes to because they know that it is not their work, but um, the work of the Lord. End time leaders must not fear the evil, uh, the, the devil, I mean. They must not fear the devil because the devil is a defeated foe. And uh, Christ, being the leader of the end time army, is ready to help us in a, 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 in a work to confront and expose uh, the, the wiles of the enemy. They don't have to be, uh, we don't have to be afraid of anything. We have to know that Christ is at the helm of everything. We have to wear the full armor of the gospel and fear nothing and go forward, whichever our Lord be. And uh, our end time leaders will be able to speak to one another. In the book of Malachi, because Malachi is one of the chapters of the book of the end time job. Uh, uh, the, the, those who actually heeded to the voice of the Lord spoke one to another. And their names were written in the book. And uh, they don't come down. Even if they are despised, they have to say that... Um, we are doing a better job. We are doing, they, they, they don't have to be distracted by anything. They don't have to be distracted by anything. When they, they, are, they are called to come down to some accusation, they, 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 they won't accept to come down from their work just to answer a, a critics and to respond to them. They have to have the words of Nehemiah, the work of re reformation, and uh, uh, not come down to the, the, the critics. And... Uh, there's a lot going on. There is some distraction uh, that it is the people of God are involving themselves. And uh, this is one of the things that uh, has impended the work that should be done at such a time. Taking a lot of time answering critics rather than doing the work that God has given them to do. And so the time for this time, we know that the work has to be finished the time that we have is so short and it have to be finished and all we have to do is to walk worthy before the lord and be fruitful in every good work increasing in the knowledge of god and not only increasing but giving unto others because we read in a look at uh, the book of second timothy 2 the book of second timothy I'm talking about end time godly leaders. Nehemiah principles. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. Thou therefore my son be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit down to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. The, you know, the harvest is ripe, the reapers are few, and we are asking the Lord to bring in the reapers. But the Lord has also entrusted us with knowledge, and instead of holding this knowledge, we should be having seminars, workshops, and camps, and training up ministers, gospel workers, to be able to finish the work. The problem is that we have information, we have knowledge, but we are holding it. We are not 
and trusting it to able men who can be able to teach others. And that is why there is a lot of lack in the field of the people to do the job because those who have been given the knowledge are not equipping others with it. And uh, this needs proper planning. This needs gospel order. We must be willing to plan and then proceed according to the gospel order. We must equip people with the end time message and uh, equip the people with the message and unctioned by the Holy Spirit go forward doing the work. I, I like to enter into the last segment of end time God leaders. What is the most important thing? And I had touched it um, in passing uh, previously. Uh, the issue of um, working together. This is so much important unto us. Because uh, I, I like you to see this. I like you to see this. Something has been going on which should not be going on. And uh, hold on for a moment. Uh, I'm looking at uh, the, the current movements, the current uh, Uh, let us see. This is uh, Testimony to the Church, Volume 9, page 258, Paragraph 3. We, we, we are admonished to work together, but something has been happening among us which actually the Lord does not enjoy. Testimony to the Church, Volume 9, page 258, Paragraph 3. This spasmodic Fitful movements of some who claim to be Christian are well uh, represented by the work of a strong but untrained horses. When one pulls forward, another pulls back. And at the voice of their master, one plunges ahead and the other stands immovable. If men will not move in concert in the great and grand work for this time, there will be confusion. It is not a good sign when men refuse to unite with their brethren and prefer to act alone. Let laborers take into their confidence the brethren who are free to point out every departure from right principles. Uh, if men wear the yoke of Christ, they cannot pull apart. They will draw with Christ. Some workers pull with all the power that God has given them, but they have not yet learned that they should not pull alone. Instead of isolating themselves, let them draw in harmony with their fellow laborers. Unless they do this, their activity will work at their wrong time, at the wrong time and in the wrong way. They will often work counter to that which God would have done, and thus their work is worse than wasted. So, at a time like this, we need to be marshalling our strength together to finish the work. But the spasmodic movements of this time acts like untrained horses. Another plunges forward, another moves at another direction. The master voice is heard, and then the, the, the people are immovable. This is what it has hindered a lot the growth of the work at such a time. Working together gets the job done quickly. 
This is the only way to combat an enemy. And we should be working in Colossians chapter 3 verses 23 to 24 which we are told what you do, do at uh, work it with all your effort as working for the Lord, not for men, since you know that you will receive an inheritance for the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you, whom you are serving. You are not serving self. You are working for the Lord. We are to know that we are in the vineyard of the Lord. And instead of hitting at each other, we must consider each other. And look at Hebrews chapter 10 verses 24 to 25. This is what we read. And let us consider how we may spur one another toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all of more and all the more as you see the day approaching. But many will not uh, uh, concede to do such a work. They like to be independent in their work and alone. As if the work of the Lord uh, is confined to people, to one person. And uh, you find that Moses, when he was in the wilderness and the work was much, he was able by the advice of, um, uh, 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 we learn from Moses. Uh, one thing that we learn from Moses that... Uh, he is a man when he was often discouraged and dist uh, distracted, held communion with the Lord. Then he will turn to Israelite, re energize, and with clear sense of purpose. And then he, lesson number two, we can learn from Moses that uh, Moses didn't do it alone. Early on, his teammate included his mother, his sister Miriam, and the Egyptian pr princess who raised him. In adulthood, his brother Aaron became an indispensable part of his team. His father-in-law, Jethro, advised him to delegate by way of magistrate and judges to help settle disputes. This was the origins of delegation. And so, uh, the spasmodic movements that don't feel like coming together and finishing the work, actually, they have to learn from Nehemiah and they have to learn from Moses, who was meek and lowly in spirit like Jesus himself. And then, when we have done this, the Lord himself, we will... Uh, and people may say, where are the people to work with? No, the Lord will work with a few minority. When everything was going haywire in the wilderness, Moses had only Caleb and Joshua. Even the sister Miriam and the brother Aaron they went against him. Miriam said that, are you the only one that the Lord speaks to? Aaron also was on that side, and he remained with only Caleb and Joshua. And so we should not look that uh, we should be many so as to finish the work, but the few who are like-minded should come together and be able to finish the work. And uh, uh, as we end, there should be no compromise because we want to finish the work. When Moses came from the mount, he said, who is on the Lord's side? And those who are on the Lord's side were able to take their instruments of war and do away with those who had made an idol. God's people, the greatest one of the world, is the wand of men. Men who will call sin by it is rightful name. Men who will not shrink at anything. Men who will rather die than sin. Men who will rather die than compromise the truth. And uh, uh, we are told uh, in this closing work that. Uh, in the work of reform to be carried forward today, there is a need of men who, like Ezra and Nehemiah, will not palliate or excuse sin to, nor shrink from vindicating the honor of God. Those upon whom rest the burden of his, this work will not hold their peace when wrong is done. Neither will they cover evil with a cloak of false charity. They will remember that God is no respect of persons and that severity to a few may prove much to many. They will remember also that in 
the one who rebukes evil, the spirit of Christ, should ever be revealed. Patriarchs, uh, this is Prophets and Kings 675.1 and 2. In their work, Ezra and Nehemiah humbled themselves before God, confessing their sins and the sins of their people, and entreating pardon as if they themselves were the offenders. Patiently they told and prayed and suffered. That which made their work most difficult was not the open hostility of the heathen, but the secret opposition of pretended friends, who by lending their influence to the service of evil, increased tenfold the burden of God's servant. These traitors furnished the Lord's enemies with material to use in their warfare upon his people. Their evil, evil passions uh, and rebellious wills were ever at war with the plain requirements of God. And so God is looking at a people. In this last day, the Lord has a controversy with his professed people in these last days. In this controversy, many responsible positions will take a course directly opposite to that pursued by Nehemiah. They will not only ignore and despise the Sabbath themselves, but they will try to keep it from others by burying it beneath the rubbish of custom and tradition. In churches, in large gatherings, in the open air, ministers will urge upon the people the necessity of keeping the first day of the week. There are calamities on sea and land, and there, these calamities will increase. One disaster following close up another, and the little band of conscientious Sabbath keepers will be pointed out as the ones who are bringing the wrath of God upon the world by their disregard of Sunday. And the Lord needs a people who will stand by his word and not be distracted. Do the work that is nearest to you. Do it even though it may amid perils and hardship in the missionary field, but do not, I beg of you, complain of hardship and sacrifices. Look at the world and see what plans they devised the, that the light of the gospel might shine in the benighted minds. We will not labor with the expectation of receiving our reward in this life, but with our eyes fixed steadfastly upon the price at the end of the race. Men and women are wounded now who are as true to duty as the needle to the pole, men and women who will work without having their way smooth and every obstacle moved. And so I pray that um, the Lord, you will allow the Lord to use you. This is our last quote. You will allow the Lord to use you and not look upon your shoulders. Be like an Ezra. Be like an Nehemiah. Be a Daniel. Dare you be a Daniel, by the way. Be like Moses. God wants minute men. He will have men who, when important decisions are to be made, are as true as the needle to the pole. Men whose special and personal interests are swallowed up as were our saviors. In the one great general interest of salvation of souls, Satan plays upon the human mind wherever chance has been left for him to do so, and he seizes upon the very time and place where he can do the most service to himself and the greatest injury to the cause of God. A neglect to do what we might do and what God requires us to do in his cause is a sin which cannot be palliated with excuse of circumstances or condition, for Jesus has made provision for all in every emergency. God is calling me and you. Will we answer the call of God to be end time godly leaders? First Chronicles 12 32 says that let us read this verse as we close. First Chronicles 12 32 the tribe of Issachar there were men who understood the time and what Israel ought to do. Aren't we having men and women in Israel who know what ought to be done at such a time as this? The book, we are closing with the uh, uh, 1 Chronicles 12, 32. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their command. Men. They were not many people, they were few people, but they understood time and what Israel ought to do. We must be men who understand the times and what we ought to do. And what is God wanting? A godly people who can be used for such a time as this. God bless you. May you sanctify your heart as I sanctify mine. May we not be distracted by anything, but give ourselves wholly unto the Lord that we may be used for his service. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word, which is sure and which does not fail. 
we want to be filled by thy own spirit, thy word may dwell in us that we may be able to be streamlets of the same to others. Help us to have the courage and help us to avail ourselves to be used. Help us to be men like Nehemiah, Moses, Daniel, Ezra in such a time as this when darkness fills the world. Thank you, Lord, for you yourself. You see the harvest is ripe, but the reapers are few. The Lord of harvest, may you raise up reapers to be able to do thy work. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and uh, think about the things we have learned today. Blessings.